Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, this, I'd like to thank you all for joining us today. My name is Chris Delzig. I'm the Director of Strategic Initiatives for the Entomological Society of America. I'm the staff member who's charged with implementing this policy program for ESA. We've got a great, if short, 30-minute webinar today that should give everyone either a crash course in science advocacy or a refresher on why it's important. I'll remind you that this webinar is being recorded and it's going to be posted to the website shortly. We had nearly 100 people register for the webinar. Your audio lines are currently muted. If you have a question to ask, you can submit it at any time, but we'll take care of those at the end of the webinar. We have to get through as many of them as possible. If there are, there are two ways to ask a question, most people typically use the question function. However, uh, if you'd also like, you can uh, choose the raise your hand function located in the smaller box off the side of the control panel. If selected, we'll unmute your line and you can ask your question verbally. Please be sure to have your mute function off on your own phone when we call on you. Also, you'll notice that there's a small bar between the webinar and our speaker. You can control the size of the screen by moving that bar up and down. So with that, let's get started. I'm pleased to introduce Dr. Marianne Elaine, or M, and she's a research scientist and lecturer at the University of Illinois at Urbana. She's a member of the inaugural class of the Science Policy Fellows in 2014. She's a past president of PPT, is a strong science activist, and was recently elected to be a member of the ESA governing board representing the PBT section. She also represents the North Central branch on the ESA Science Policy Committee, all of which is to say that she's well qualified to lead this section. Welcome, Em. <laughs> thank you, Chris. And uh, thank you for everybody for attending. Uh, right now you are just 42 attendees. Uh, I have no idea who's there, how many, I'll, I'll consider you, you're all my friends. So, um, so I'm not so nervous. Um, so uh, welcome, we're going to, I'm going to give a little presentation about why science advocacy is important and why uh, we uh, thought this Entomology Advocacy Week uh, would be a, a great way to see if, to get our members uh, more involved in ad advocacy. Um, so this is the inaugural week. We kind of only started uh, planning this in the last couple of months. Uh, we still thought it would be important to do it now uh, because um, it is um, an important thing to do now because uh, we have some things coming up uh, in a little bit. So uh, I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page here, that we are, agree that evidence-based uh, decision-making um, is uh, under attack. Um, it is bigger than just red, blue, bigger than DOP versus Democrats. Uh, we are seeing more and more than emotions and maybe uh, fear rhetoric. It's uh, winning over science. And, um, and also just the nature of science means that we, it takes a little more time to convince people of uh, what, what, what we're telling them. Uh, we don't have right or wrong answers. We have the current evidence. Uh, we don't, we can't say if something is safe or, or harmful. We can, we can say something like, well, there is no finding of significant harm. That's just, that is the way how, uh, how science is, but that can still be used for sound policy making, and it should be used for sound policy making. So um, here are a couple of examples of where things uh, may have gone wrong in the past, and therefore our, our, our field of science uh, and of entomology is under attack. Um, so we want to, uh, give you the tools to maybe fight back a little bit. So um, why should you advocate? Well, it's your right. Um, as an American citizen, it's your right to advocate. Um, but also, I, you know, quite frankly, I'm not an American citizen. It's still my right. I am a taxpayer. I work in the U.S. My children are a U.S. citizen. So it's still, it's my right. And I've never had anybody uh, call me on that. Um, it is essential to democracy it, that um, all citizens are involved, and that includes all scientists. And, um, and it is normal to advocate on behalf of your discipline. Now, this is maybe a new way of thinking. I think in the past, we really would have loved to be able to say, I'm doing my science in the lab, and then I'm disseminating my results, and then somebody else can use it and, and make policy decisions with that. Um, I think we need to be a little bit more proactive 
uh, about how we do that and that we actually do that. I think those days are over. Um, if you're if you're not good at communicating science, then of course, if, you know, we're not going to force anybody to do it. But I think it is important for scientists to advocate about science, that science is going to be used in making policy decisions. And uh, I also realize that it can't be the only thing that we uh, use to make policy decisions. So socioeconomic issues are also important, but definitely science should be part of the uh, part of the decision making. So uh, why now? Why did we decide to do this uh, advocacy week um, right in the middle of uh, August? Well, it turns out um, there's a couple of things happening that are um, relevant to entomology. For instance, there is a pollinator uh, field tour uh, being organized that is going to be in uh, North Dakota. Uh, this year, last year it was in Mississippi. It's a great success. So we'll we'll do a lot of uh, promotion for that, and that that's in August. It's National Honeybee Day. If you didn't know that already, it's, I'm sure it's on your calendar. World Mosquito Day on August 20th. There's also a joint effort between Pi and CCB for an invasive species field tour, and um, I think if I remember correctly, that's that one's in Pennsylvania. Um, but also, that is the week when uh, Congress is supposed to be in recess. Uh, however, the Senate has is, already knows that they're not allowed to go home and have to stay. Uh, but the U.S. House of Representatives um, are, are supposed to be in recess and will come to your district, come home to your district, and therefore should be able, uh, should be available for meetings if you uh, were interested in meeting with them. And then, of course, we also wanted to do it this this year still because um, the midterm elections are coming up, and again, we want to force, or we want to, we were hopeful that science will become more of an of a of a of a of a, a topic uh, for discussion leading up to the elections. So, um, what what we thought we'd do? We don't want to spend too much of your time here um, uh, just uh, talking at you. Uh, I wanted to give you five ways for uh, you to take action during that week. And some of it is very straightforward some, and some of it is going to be a little bit scary. Um, so, uh, but hopefully you, at the end of this presentation, you will, you will say, okay, at least one of these things I can do and I'm going to do that during that, the uh, entomology uh, advocacy week. So let's get started with number one. So uh, the first one is uh, maybe you could request a meeting with your senator or your representative. Um, like I said, they're going to be in, uh, hopefully at least the representatives are going to be in your home state, in your home district, um, and maybe you can uh, set up a meeting with them. Also, and this is for the future, even if it falls outside of the, that week, you can go to DC and request a meeting with a senator or a representative. Um, they, these are very um, um, important points of contact. Uh, they're very, they're pretty influential uh, of anything that you can do. So uh, we highly recommend you doing it, even though it's really, really scary. So, uh, or it seems to be kind of scary um, if you have imposter syndrome, like um, probably 90% of us do. So um, I just wanted to, to also make clear, look, when you are co come to DC, uh, you should inform ESA. And uh, because we uh, coordinate uh, with a, a firm called uh, Lewis Burke and Associates, and they help us um, uh, make contact with the right representatives, and they are aware of all the bills that are up uh, up for a vote or that are being discussed, and they can help you coordinate with the meetings and get the right, and get you into the right rooms. So uh, you don't have to do this from scratch. ESA can help you with this. Um, uh, so uh, uh, you will probably meet uh, mostly with staff, but uh, they say the congressional staff says that an in-person visit is actually uh, very influential if the lawmaker has not yet decided on a certain issue. So uh, we highly encourage you to do this. 
but you can also do this in your home district. So maybe you can set up a meeting uh, during August with your representative. Um, so here's how you uh, locate them at the bottom and we'll share these URLs with you later on. You can uh, locate your senators and how to get uh, how to get in contact with them and how to maybe meet with them and also the House of Representatives uh, has the same kind of URL where you can find contact information. Um, but also your state legislators um, uh, that should be easy enough to find and we highly encourage you uh, to contact them too. Um, they're often very interested in saying if, if you're from the Midwest, like I am in farm issues. So if you have anything to add to the current discussion of the farm bill, for instance, uh, please contact them and, and go talk to them. And we'll give you some tips on how to do that. So, and you don't have to go alone. Maybe you can bring a colleague and you can go to a meeting together. That's always uh, even better and more fun. Um, and uh, so you find your member of Congress, uh, we'll call them MOCs from here on. Um, and then you look at the individual websites to find the staff members. Um, and you have to make sure that you are a constituent or that you at least have some connection with the home district, because otherwise they really are not that interested in meeting with you. Um, but, um, you can go to their DC office, their local office, or you can even invite them to your lab. So when, so when you know that they're in your district, maybe they actually would like to come uh, uh, to your university and maybe you can uh, offer to organize a whole session where they come to your lab. Um, so, uh, but and basically you can uh, request a 15 minute meeting and here we have a, a, a form letter uh, that you can use. Well, we suggest you change it somewhat because form letters are not that useful, but you, you know, you see there the important information that should be included. And that's all also on the entomology uh, NSOC website. Um, so you, it includes your name and your affiliation. They love it if you're from a, you know, you're, you're from a university or from a company. Um, and, uh, and you tell them the purpose of your meeting. You have to kind of do this three or four weeks in advance. So considering that they're going to be uh, in your district in about uh, three weeks, make sure you send out that letter soon asking for a meeting. Uh, keep following up if you don't hear back. And if the actual member is unavailable, maybe you can ask uh, if a legislative aide uh, who handles science and health issues uh, is available. So every member of Congress has a staff and this, those staff members are usually have a portfolio that they represent, and it may and so science may be in their portfolio, or uh, like health uh, may be in their portfolio. But sometimes it's a it's a weird uh, mix of things. Maybe um, ag is in one portfolio and forestry is in another. So make sure that you understand which um, staffers to legislative aides, which staffers to to contact, which ones are most useful for you. So um, you kind of figured out who you were going to meet with uh, and then uh, you do your homework. Um, it's really nothing different from how we got here in the first place. We prepare, we do homework. We do, what, can, what do we know about this member of Congress? What have they been interested in before? What, uh, what do they feel strongly about? Um, and uh, what committees do they serve on? Because they're not, if they're not on the um, uh, space committee, then they don't really want to talk about uh, uh, space flight or anything like that. So uh, make sure uh, you're, you're in the right room and also which caucuses they're affiliate, affiliated with and which ones they support. Um, so this also will help you figure out how you could connect to them? Like, how can you make your story uh, uh, connect with them, with the, with the member of Congress or their staffer? So uh, there at the bottom, uh, also it's kind of to show you, you um, we rarely meet, even as science policy fellows, which is what I am, um, we rarely meet with the actual member of Congress. I've, I've met Dick Durbin, but it was by accident. I have met with his staff, the chief of staff, but that was purely by accident um, because he came through uh, this, this antechamber while I was talking to uh, 
legislative aide, and he said, I want to talk to you about uh, genetically modified organisms. And I was like, okay, yeah, that's, that's why I, I'm here. Uh, and so that was purely by accident. I actually did not have a meeting, but you kind of have to be prepared for that. So, uh, but most of the time you only get the legislative aid uh, that you get to talk to, but that, that's already a win. That is, that's very much a win. Uh, then here's some, just some basics. Um, if you do go to Congress, if you go to Capitol Hill, or even if you go to um, the capital uh, of your state, uh, of course, wear professional business attire, but comfortable shoes. Um, of course, it's okay to add, add a personal touch, uh, for instance, an insect tie or an insect uh, earrings or something like that. Always, uh, you know, maybe 20% of the time, that's actually how a conversation starts. Um, so, uh, or you can have themed shirts. That's also very common on Capitol Hill, but uh, maybe a little hokey for our purposes. Um, again, be prepared. Um, there's a picture there of Abraham Lincoln who said, if you give me uh, six hours to chop down some trees, I'll spend four hours sharpening the blade of the ax. So, uh, and we all want to be like Lincoln. So, uh, prepare, prepare, prepare. So, uh, and then of course be polite, focused, um, leave your politics at the door, uh, be on time, be prepared with an ask, like, which is really important. Like, and that's part of your homework. Why are you there? Why do you want to talk to this uh, member of Congress? Why should he or she be listening to you? Um, so, so there should be an ask. Um, um, I would like, uh, to uh, ask or recommend that you support this in this bill that asks for this and much of an increase in USDA funding or NSF funding or something like that. So be prepared uh, for that. Don't just come in like, hey, I want to thug bugs with you. That's not going to work. Uh, and again, practice, practice, practice. Um, and um, again, park your personal politics at the door. That really doesn't doesn't work. And you will also be very surprised uh, when you walk into somebody's office who you think uh, you're absolutely not going to like, um, that you actually can have some really good conversations in those in those rooms uh, about about some important topics. So park your politics at the door. Um, we'll go over a little bit what you should say in a meeting like this, and I, I put this up because this is really important. This is uh, because it's it's opposite of how we usually think about how we want to convey our science. Uh, when we write uh, a paper or present uh, a scientific paper um, at an entomology meeting, uh, we go from the title, abstract, the introduction to maybe at the end the results and some discussion. Whereas in a meeting with the general public, and I guess, and also with the members of Congress, you have to be, you start with the, the newsworthy stuff. The why are you there? Uh, why is this important? And here are some, and again, there's a, there's a URL that we will share with you later um, that uh, gives you more, there's more information there on how to do this. We, we've now been doing science policy fellows, um, meetings to Congress for it's now four years or so. So we have come up with lots of tips and lots of different ways of how to do this best. So, uh, and we are happy to share that with you. Um, so what you say is you start with thank you. Uh, you introduce yourself, you exchange business cards, which is always kind of fun. Uh, and then you describe your affiliation. It's okay to, to mention that you represent maybe both your institution and ESA. Um, and, uh, and, and then you give them the message of why you're there, that I'm very concerned about federal support for entomology. This is why entomology is important, uh, the, because of the environment, because of human health, because of agriculture, the food security, things like that. So get, get that all out right away and state your ask. We need more support for, uh, federal investigations of, of, of uh, how tick-borne diseases spread or something like that. And uh, then you let them talk a bit, you answer their questions. Uh, don't be afraid to say, I don't know, uh, but I'm more than happy to follow up with you on that uh, because um, our membership has, we have 7,000 members and 
there's bound to be a couple of people who really know this, uh, know the answer to this, and I would like to contact them or have them contact you. Uh, so that's how you handle that. And then, of course, you end with a thank you. Thank you for seeing me. So there's do's and don'ts, and uh, many of these do's and don'ts are uh, pretty obvious. You, you do, you, the do's are you be, you be on time, courteous, you have done your homework, uh, you find your hook, so you're prepared, you have examples, like personal examples, uh, you know, about um, uh, tick-borne disease or something, or maybe there's an outbreak in your district for, of, a, of, of a certain uh, uh, a mosquito species or something like that. But also be a good listener. Um, sometimes your message might not quite make it across to the, uh, the staff member, but maybe the staff member all of a sudden realizes that he or she actually had, has to research a topic that's related to what you're in, what, why you're there, and then uh, it's, it's sort of, it's working that out uh, in their heads and then asking you questions about it. So maybe that is, uh, maybe the conversation will go completely the, a, a different direction, but that's okay. You're in the door and they actually need some help on an entomological issue and you're there to provide that to them. And that's what we ultimately as ESA want is that they realize if an insect is involved in this issue that they're, they're struggling with, they will call on ESA for information. So uh, of course you stay positive. Um, you can always uh, offer specifics from your experience and you offer yourself, you offer ESA, you offer your university or your company as a resource. Um, but stay on message, you know, don't go into uh, gun control or Trump or any of the other issues. Uh, and then uh, when you're home, you follow up with um, any information that you promised them or, and definitely a thank you note. Um, so again, so they know, they probably file it into a folder that is, you know, says weird insect people uh, but then when they realize they might need to call on a weird insect person, that they will actually uh, email you for advice. So that's what, what we, we want to accomplish. Um, uh, don't be surprised if you're kept waiting, even at, um, if you're meeting in the district at an office, uh, there's always a long line. Um, so even if you have an appointment, you may uh, have to wait. Um, don't be surprised or discouraged if you only get a legislative e uh, aid and if they uh, appear to be very young and inexperienced, that is just the way it is. And uh, they're also very often very appreciative of good information that they can take to their, to their boss uh, to help uh, inform the final decision. So they're, uh, and, they know, and they know their jobs. They know this is, my, this is my portfolio. This is what I have to deal with. Um, and of course, those staff or policymakers are not experts. Um, so these meet, so they're often these meetings are a little superficial. Therefore, also don't use any technical jargon. Um, that is, uh, that's a no-no. Uh, don't offer any offsets. Uh, like uh, if I if I were you, I would cut this or I would uh, do this instead. That is not that's not how you. Uh, that, that's not how you would behave in a, in a meeting like this. Um, don't prolong the meeting. If you had a 15 minute meeting, but you're done after 10 minutes, that's fine. If you got your say, that's good. Don't forget to say thank you. And again, don't pick a fight, um, but that's probably pretty unlikely. All right, so another thing you can do, so that one is, that, that first one was kind of the scary one to actually meet with people, uh, but you also can write or call your lawmaker about an issue. Most offices track constituents' responses and opinion about a topic. Most offices uh, would uh, take that under, into consideration. Um, but, uh, there's also offices where that might not be the case. I'm, I may be living in one of those uh, districts, but it's not gonna deter me. Um, again, beware of the imposter syndrome. Remember, you are the subject matter expert. There are very few other people who can, are an expert on entomology and are reaching out to these um, to these legislators. So uh, you 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 got this. Um, 
so uh, Congress does place high value on groups that uh, and citizens, and, and they like to build relationships with um, with entomologists in these uh, legislative offices. So it may take time to build that relationship, but um, uh, it is very much worth it. Um, and again, form letters uh, are very much uh, ineffective, uh, but congressional staffers do say that they find it helpful to have informed uh, um, content to help shape their bill or issue, um, con uh, inform information on how it directly affects their district and their state. But they do say that, that they rarely receive that information. And so that's your in right there. You can give them that information as a citizen, uh, as a constituent. Um, so this is a really uh, helpful uh, a graph uh, that shows you that in-person visits like what we did what we talked about in point one is very useful also point two is contact with the representatives uh, uh, by constituents represent, representing them is also useful so the science policy fellows going to uh, to congress to represent you as a member of the sa is helpful or even Lewis Burke and Associates, um, them, they are our representatives also, so that's also very useful. Um, going to town hall meetings, um, I do not have very much experience in that, uh, but those are also really uh, good um, uh, questions. Even though I just remembered, I went to, uh, um, my senator, Dick Durbin, holds uh, coffee hours once every two weeks in DC. So I once went to one of those and I actually um, asked a question about NSF funding and he had a really good response about it. And then afterwards I shook his hand, hand and he remembered that. Um, so that's kind of like a town hall meeting. So also be on the lookout for that. So even though there were lots of other questions about real estate and about uh, uh, patient rights and things like that, um, I did get that entomology question in there and he, he it made him think about uh, about uh, NSF, so that was that was good. Phone calls are helpful too. Uh, letters, letters to the editor, which we'll talk about next. Uh, faxes, not so much, um, and uh, form letters also not so much. So um, let's. So the so there there is data on this about how um, members and their staff view uh, the the value of these uh, the ways that you contact them. So, uh, so the op-ed in a local or a national paper, but mostly local would be good, is uh, it's also very helpful and you know maybe not as scary. So uh, focus on maybe a community paper, like your local paper, uh, where uh, uh, because that's what the the supposedly the legislator will will read. So you should, um, maybe you could write a, a letter there. And usually it's about, what is it, like 500 words or something. It's not very long. Um, so you don't bury the lead. You follow uh, the rules exactly on how to, how to submit the content. Uh, and, uh, and oftentimes this is valued. We already see this, um, like in my uh, home district, where my local newspaper had a, a lot of letters to the editor that always uh, steered in one direction, but now there's more and more people writing letters to the editors, kind of go showing them a different viewpoint. And we already can see that the general public is discussing certain issues more, whereas in the past they just saw only one opinion uh, uh, given to them. So I think this is very useful. So if we can have more letters to the editors about science and why science is important and why entomology is important, that would be great. Um, if you think, still think that that's a little uh, scary, maybe consider com submitting content to entomology today, uh, even though uh, we can't take too many of those, of these, uh, of these kinds of uh, uh, letters. Uh, but if you can always discuss that with uh, uh, Joe Romanicki, who uh, runs entomology today. Uh, and uh, you could also also write a letter to say thank you to your member of Congress when they do something very good, like when they uh, support science. Um, I've, I have there some uh, resources that you can use uh, to that help you uh, uh, write uh, write an op-ed. 
So maybe that's something you want, might want to do for August. Um, so you, so you, you can, what is your goal? That's, that should be in there. You make one major point, make it timely. Don't, um, you know, I think maybe now uh, letters about farm bill may already be too, too late. They have been uh, written by the House and the Senate. I don't know, they have to be, uh, uh, what's that called, brought together. Uh, but I'm not sure if that is, if this is a timely point for that or not. Uh, but if you see something coming up in the future uh, uh, that you can, that you, that you want to talk about, um, please write a letter. That would be great. Abide by the word limit. Don't give the editor any excuse to not even consider your uh, your uh, letter. Uh, include contact information, prop, uh, preferably contact information that is from within that the the the, the uh, newspaper's um, area. So. Um, put your whole town in there, and then respond promptly when the editor con contacts you for clarification, and then uh, submit it to local newspapers. Local, I think, is most important. I mean, everybody would like to have an editorial in the New York Times or the Washington Post, but probably local newspapers is more likely to be accepted and maybe even as impactful. So. Um, and then number four is, if you're not already, get active on social media or don't be afraid to add a little bit more science advocacy into your, uh, into your Instagramming or your Facebooking. Um, or if you want, you can have a whole new account with, that is just uh, the, your professional tone uh, uh, account. Um, so, and then occasionally uh, create a thread about a topic. We've, we've seen some great examples late, lately about um, um, you know, you know, you start with I study such and such, and this is why it's important. So uh, you can create a whole thread about a topic. It's kind of like a little uh, op-ed, um, and um, tag your lawmakers uh, on the issues that concern them. Uh, again, praise them as they vote uh, for, uh, pro science, um, and then find hashtags that impact your topic. And, and here it's probably really important to figure out who your target group is. Do you, do you want uh, farmers to be better, um, to better informed about science on uh, resistance development or something like that? Uh, then where are, these, where are these farmers on social media? Because they, they are. Um, figure out where they are at and maybe follow them or see what uh, hashtags they are using and then maybe uh, kind of insert yourself there in that in that uh, in those discussions and that's totally okay um, uh, and then you uh, the, the fifth thing is that I don't want you to to, to just consider this as you um, just giving more time and doing all this volunteer stuff uh, for nothing. Well, it's not for nothing. It's for the good of, of, of everybody that science is included. But it also helps you build your own brand and your institutions. And I, I want to stress that the times of you just doing research in a lab is, are over. Uh, you need to um, communicate your science uh, to, to, to make clear why what you're doing is important. And, and how you are using uh, funding to do this. And then on top of that, you therefore need to do science advocacy. Uh, how then are the, can, should those results be used in policymaking? And also, why is it important that there should be increased funding or at least same level funding uh, for this type of research? How, why is it important? And you know why this is, you, you're, you're the, the expert. So, uh, so you can be a resource uh, for entomology issues. So be out there, say, you know, this is part of what I do. I, I do research, I teach, I also advocate for science. It's all part of the same thing. Um, and then uh, you can, and it can be very simple, like uh, ESA now has a fair number of position statements that the Science Policy Committee uh, uh, coordinates. Um, and uh, there's one on tick-borne uh, diseases, one on pollinator health. There's one on there's an info infographic on I IPM. 
download those, use them, send them to people that you think uh, would care about that information. And, or you just write a letter of introduction. Hi, I'm so-and-so, I work on such and such issues. If in the future you come across uh, certain um, uh, issues that I can help with, please don't, uh, uh, please contact me. And that can be a member of Congress, that can be uh, your state legislators, that can be certain, you know, I don't know, maybe even people on school board who are trying to figure out what kind of um, uh, school IPM to use or something like that. So uh, uh, put yourself out there. And that, I think in the end, uh, institutions also like this. Uh, because it, uh, that's, it's part of their job too, to, uh, to make contact with the taxpayers, with the, the people that they represent. Um, just in general, as uh, to finish this up, be mindful of your tone. Surprisingly, Congress is generally a congenial atmosphere. They, it is, it's a very pleasant pl place to visit, uh, either the federal level or the state level. Uh, they are happy to meet with you, uh, view it as a nonpartisan thing, uh, speak in layman's term, and uh, they are not really going to know that much about science in general and definitely not about entomology. So, um, but on the other hand, we have some really, ca really charismatic uh, uh, bugs that we study and, and so we can be proud of that and we can always get people excited about entomology. So use honey. Don't use vinegar, uh, that will be good. So, uh, just a couple of uh, things about ESA. We have, uh, we have the science uh, advocacy initiative. We have certain issues that we're active on or engaged or are watching. If any of these appeal to you, uh, grab them, use that as your, as your um, uh, into uh, science advocacy and, and we're more than happy to help you with that. And, uh, and let you know what we've been working on and what our experiences are. Um, when you do go visit uh, uh, Congress or the state or the st or at state level, uh, again you have the advantage of we have already all these position statements. In this case, maybe a tick-borne diseases or invasive insect distribution maps. Uh, we can we can give to you. They always love to get some insects in alcohol vials. That's always a nice leaf behind. Uh, fact sheets, infographics, and your imaginations. Anything that you think uh, might stop them to and think about the importance of entomological research. All right, so that is what, those are a couple of things that you could be doing for, uh, uh, for the Entomology Advocacy Week. Um, we suggest you use that hashtag, Advocate18, uh, whatever you're doing, always tag uh, NSOC America on it so we know what you're doing and we can uh, um, um, make the message even bigger uh, so it's on Twitter or on Facebook. Um, something that we always also would like to do, and we haven't really quite done this yet, and hopefully all these people that are here on the, on the call now, is um, if you have done something in the past or you're going to do it, we would love to hear your experiences. So maybe we can then post them uh, on the ESA uh, advocacy website follow, or the policy pages uh, website, and we can share them with everybody. And then people can learn from them and build on them and not have to reinvent the wheel. So uh, this, that's one of the things that we, that we hope will come out of this advocacy week. So we can then uh, a year from now, make it even bigger. Um, so, I think that, well, that's pretty much the end of what I wanted to say. Um, I, I was wondering if you wanted to maybe promise here something in, in maybe the question box, what you, what you are willing to do during Entomology Advocacy Week. Uh, are you gonna do uh, five tweets on a certain topic? Or are you gonna do a hundred tweets? Or are you going to actually uh, uh, reach out to a member of Congress and go and meet with them? Um, what do you think you're going to be doing? So I'm going to leave it at that and like and and um, have maybe Chris moderate some questions, if that's possible. Yeah. Well, first off, Em, thank you so much. That was a great presentation, really informative and uh, a, a good deep dive on a lot of topical areas. So okay. you don't know this because you were talking, but we went ahead and, and 
uh, went through some of the questions while you were doing your presentation. All right. Uh, but while, if anybody has anything else they'd like to, to drop in, um, please let us know. Um, if anybody can't find the questions box, please let us know that as well. Waiting a minute to see if any other, uh, so why do we not have a 501c4? That's from Ben. Um, you know what, I'm going to take this opportunity to unmute uh, the line of one of our advocacy members. So um, um, as we're scrolling up here to it, uh, Aaron Kudwalader. Okay. So we're going to unmute Aaron Kudwalader's line, and she is our government relations lead at Lewis Burke Associates, our, our firm. Uh, and Aaron, the question is this. Why do we not have a 501c4? Is that something you want to take? Um, are, aren't you guys a 501c3? Or <laughs> yes. 501c3 I, I have to say, oh, sorry, were you saying something, Chris? No, I was just saying that we, uh, so the society is indeed a 501c3. Um, and I guess I'm not, uh, Ben, I'm not smart enough to know the, the, the finer points of the distinction there between the, the C3 and the C4. Um, uh, so if you wanted to add to that question, we'd be happy to, to look into that. Yeah, I, I will say, Ben, if you're interested in how societies can do advocacy if they're 501c3s, you know, uh, we file all the correct paperwork for our efforts, and it is something you're permitted to do as a nonprofit. It's, um, part of the, the tax code and has been for a long time. So, you know, these are finer yeah, points I mean, regarding yeah. tax status. I guess I would, you know, remark that, you know, the society's main uh, reason for existence will always be to serve the needs of entomologists. You know, we're principally a scientific society. Uh, we publish the journals, we host the meetings. Um, uh, advocacy is an essential and critical part of what we do. Uh, but it, it, it um, I don't. I think we are still in the adolescent phase of our advocacy program, and we're really building it up still. Um, at some point in the future, a, a C4 might be an opportunity for us, but I don't think we're there yet. And do you have anything that you feel like that you'd like to add to that, or can you see the questions that are coming through as well? No, I'm not. I'm not seeing any of the questions. I'm sorry. Um, so this is. Was this also about? Are you allowed to just go to Congress, or would you be considered a lobbyist or something like that? Was that related to that? Um, so C4s are basically social advocacy groups. I, I, um, there's a, a follow-up uh, question about the fact that uh, there are, are, like for example, Bono's one campaign is a, is a C4. Um, so the other issue is that the other one C4s are social organizations, and we are not. We are much more of an educational and professional society. So it is a different tax status classification. Okay, another question. Actually, let's start with this one. There's a comment from. Uh, uh, from John, it says, I'll dedicate the week to the subject of entomology advocacy on my blog, The Well-Read Naturalist. Each day I'll feature useful books to read on entomology that might be useful to those wishing to become more active in such advocacy activities of their own. Great, great idea. That would be awesome. Uh, and we would be happy question. to promote that. Yeah. Question from Muriel. Can we have access to the PowerPoint presentation? I joined late and I missed some. I can answer that one. Yes. Uh, we will be posting the, the webinar to uh, a page that we will link to in the next issue of eNews. So just be watching for that. And that will be where we're going to host all of the tools that will support Entomology Advocacy Week. Question from Helen. And Emma, I'm going to point this one to you. Uh, as a member of the Governing Board and a Science Policy Fellow, what if a person's view or position differs from that of ESA as stated on a position paper or elsewhere? Oh. Um. I do have to add, you, I go, uh, I guess you, you can represent both, but if you are, uh, if you are saying you're representing ESA, uh, you should, you should say uh, my position is different from uh, this position statement. 
So um, I don't think we can force you to to not support something that you don't agree with. But if you're saying that you are going that you're representing ESA, you need to you need to be upfront about that. That there is a, a, a um, uh, that there's two opinions on this. Good. Thank you, Aaron. Anything to add to that? I will just add that if you are interested in going and meeting with your members and you don't agree with the ESA positions, you are still free as an individual to go. We would just ask that we don't represent your opinions as being on behalf of the society. Maybe we can say a little bit about how uh, how these position statements come about. They are uh, chosen. They are chosen by the science policy committee picks topics. Um, then there's there's some uh, the, the 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 committee uh, head, which is a former president, uh, picks the, uh, um, the the people who will be writing it. They are all uh, experts on the issue, uh, and then they spend a couple of months writing it, and then it goes through many 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 iterations, and then it finally does get approved by uh, the governing board. So the people who are writing it are not, the governing board is not writing it. Um, it's, and it's not the science policy committee that's writing it. It is actually actual people who, um, who are in that field uh, that, who write it. We get one more comment uh, from Benjamin and uh, says that as his commitment to Advocacy Week is that he's going to meet with Mark Takano. So great to hear. Thank okay. you, Ben. All right. So we, we have are, any more uh, We're good. Eight, um, all the other questions were answered in the chat box as we were going. So I appreciate everybody who asked a question. Appreciate everyone who attended, and very much appreciate uh, M for for organizing this for us today. Um, please don't forget to follow up with us at headquarters if there if you have other questions that arise, and uh, be watching for further information about Entomology Advocacy Week as we get closer and closer to the days. So with that. Thank you very much, everyone, for sharing part of your afternoon with us, and have a great day. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, everybody.